Welcome back everybody. Oh, actually one second. All right, much better. What's going on everybody? My name is Sam. This is the Keep On Coding channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about Java generics. Now, before throwing a bunch of definitions at you and confusing you all, I think the best way to understand generics are to look at the problem that it's solving and then once we understand that, we can see how generics solves that problem. So first, let's take a look and understand what the actual problem is. So initially, we just have an empty project here and say we want a, for some reason, we want a class that just prints out a variable. So what we could do here is we can say, okay, new class, and we'll just call it my class integers. And in this class, we're gonna go ahead and create an integer object called i. We wanna first create a constructor where so we can set the value of i. And secondly, we want a function that prints out i. So this works, right? But say now we want to do the same thing, but we wanna do it with doubles. So what we could do here is we can say, okay, file, new Java class, and we'll call it my class double. And then basically we can go in here, we can copy everything over. And we can just change everything to double. Okay, so now say we wanna do the same thing with strings. So what we could do here is go file, class, copy that over. So you guys kind of see what the problem is here is that we're creating duplicate code that basically does the same thing. The only thing that changes is the variable type that we're operating on. So this is where generics comes in. What we can do is we can just create one class and it can take in different types of variables. So to save all that duplicate code, what we can do here is we can just close out these classes and we can just create one class and we'll call it my class. So how would the syntax for this actually look like? So what happens is we go in between the end of the class name and the first curly brace and we make these angle brackets and we type in, you can really use whatever as long as it's not a keyword, but generally the, the normal or the practice is to use the letter T. Now, instead of creating you know, a, an integer or a double, what we do is we just say T and then we'll just call it something like object or OB. Now, when we go in and we want to initialize an instance of this class, we would go my class and then we'd use angle brackets to specify what we actually wanna pass in. So say, for example, right now we want an integer. Okay, and then we'll just say object equals new my class. Okay, cool, so say we want a double now. So all we need to do is, if we wanna create a new instance of that, we'll call it object two. And all we do is we just change this from an integer to a double. And as you can see, we don't get any errors or anything. So let's go back and add some stuff to our my class. So let's first go ahead and create a constructor here. So again, since we don't know what type of a variable we wanna pass in to initialize our OB, again, we can just do T OB, and then we can set our classes OB equal to what gets passed in in this constructor. And let's go ahead and create another method that prints out the actual type of our OB variable. So let's go ahead and create another function here that prints out the type of our variable. And we can do that by saying ob.getClass.getName. So if we go back to main, we now have to pass in a variable to our constructor. So for integer, let's just pass in 10. For double, let's go ahead and pass in 20. Now let's go ahead and call obj.showType and obj2.showType. So if we go ahead and run that, we see that the first variable is an integer and the second variable is a double, which is what we were expecting. One thing to note is that what gets passed in into my class as a generic needs to be an object type. It can't be a primitive. So you can't do something like my class int. And if we look at the error, it's saying type argument cannot be of primitive type. So you can't use something like int, you can't do something like the lowercase double, that's gonna give you an error as well. So it has, to be, um, it has to be an object, not a primitive type. Another thing to know, which was what we actually already did, is that you can pass in generics 
as parameters. So it doesn't just have to be um, a, a class member. You can also pass them in as uh, method arguments. So another thing you might be asking is, okay, this is cool and all, but what if, what if, uh, what if I go back, go back to my class and I have more than one variable? How do I, how do I handle that? Well, I got the solution for you guys. Basically, all you need to do is you just add a comma and you add another variable type. So we could pass something like V. And you can have really as many of these as you want. So for this example, I'm just gonna have two. What we would do is we would just create another variable. And we can also initialize that in the constructor. And we can also show the type of that variable. So now it's giving us an error because it's expecting two variables now. So let's go ahead and pass an integer as well as a double. And let's go ahead and run that. And as we see down here, we get integer as well as double. Because if we go back here, we see that it's printing out the class of OB as well as the class of OB2. So this would be useful in something like a hash map. Say you wanna create a hash map here. you see that it, allow, it allows us to pass in that T and that V. And if we actually go to the definition of how Java implements HashMap, we see that it calls public class HashMap and it passes in two generics as the, the key and the value. So as you can see, this is something that um, Java developers use to create Java classes. So as we can see, Java generics allow us to utilize code reusability. Basically, we don't need to create a new class for every variable type that we need to use. So now that we have the basics of generics down, let's go ahead and look at uh, something a little bit more advanced. All right, so let's go back to our main class. Let's go ahead and delete everything and let's create a new class and let's call it number functions. So in this class, say we're building out just a bunch of different functions that we can perform on numbers. So we need to do the same thing again where we have that diamond notation where we add a T and then we have our T object. And then again, we're going to create a constructor to initialize our object. And say at this point, we wanna do something like get the square of a number. So as you can see here, we're trying to multiply object times object, but we're getting this error here that says operator star cannot be applied to T T. This is because this multiplication can only be applied to numeric values, right? But if we have this T, like what happens if we pass in a string? How is it gonna multiply that string? So Java knows this and it's basically saying like allowing you not to do something like this. So how can we ensure that what we pass in as our generic is an actual number? Well, what generics provide is something called bounded types where you can bound the type of your generic to something. And how this looks like is we would go up to here and we would say t extends number. Now if we go down here, we do ob dot int value, ob dot double value. And as we see, the error goes away. So I created an object of numeric functions of type integer and I initialized it with the number four and then I called iob dot square. And if we go ahead and run that, we see that it prints out 16. So how does this actually work? So we have this class number here and its children here are integer, double, float, and basically any other numeric value. So down here we're saying we can have t as long as t extends the number class. So basically if it's a child of number, this is okay. So if we go back and we say, hey, we want to initialize this with a string, again, as you see it's gonna give us this error of type parameter string is not within its bound. It should extend java.lang.number. All right, so we're gonna look at one last example here, and that is the concept of wildcards. And again, we're gonna look at the problem first, and we're gonna see how wildcards solves that problem. So if we go back to our numeric functions class, so let's go ahead and just delete that there. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to num, just because we, we now know that this needs to be a number. And I'm gonna go ahead and create this new method here. So what this function does is it passes in a parameter of also of type numeric functions. And what it checks is that the absolute value of this 
number that gets passed in is the same as the number in our class. So basically it checks if the absolute value of num.doubleValue equals the absolute value of the object that we pass in number dot double value. And if that's true, then it returns true for everything. Otherwise it returns false. So if we go back to main, we create two objects, one of type integer and one of type double. And we go ahead and call this absolute value method. And as you can see, it's giving us an error here saying that it's expecting type integer, but you're giving me a type double. Now, why is this happening? Well, if we go back to this object here, the value that we're passing in is an integer. So if we go back to numeric functions, for this class now, t is always gonna be integer. So when we pass in a numeric functions object here, it's also expecting that to be of type t, which in this case is gonna be integer. But when we're passing it in here, dob is of type double. So that's why it's saying it's expecting an integer, but it's getting a double. So how do we solve this problem? Well, what we need to do is we need to go back and say, we don't want type t here. We put a question mark here saying that we don't know what this type is gonna be. It could be a double, could be a float, could be an integer. Now, if we go back, we see that the error is gone. And just for fun, let's go ahead and print this out. So let's go ahead and run that. And the values is true, which is what we were expecting. All right, so that is the basics of Java generics. Hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of this video. I remember the first time seeing generics, I saw these like T's and question marks and I thought it was pretty scary, but once I actually learned it, I was like, oh, this is actually not that bad and it's actually very useful. So hopefully you guys feel the same way now. Um, if you guys did like the video, you know, make sure to smash that like button. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and um, happy coding.